Hello, welcome to TFLP Microcasters. I'm Lucas, and I am joined tonight by Anna and Christian. What up? Good evening. Yay. So tonight, <clears throat> we are doing Megatron, Super Megatron, in fact, because we've not gotten <coughs> enough Megatrons lately. I haven't even reviewed, what's the other, Earthrise? Oh yeah, Earthrise Megatron. Um, so there you go. It's like, I feel like we've just gotten an onslaught over the last year or whatever, but this is mega I don't think onslaught. either of the two of us are going to get the Earthrise um, one, right? Christian, you're not going to get the Earthrise? No, not unless they do the Netflix treatment to it. Okay. But there is the, the G2 one is going to be oh, yeah. that mold, right? Mm hmm Yes. The green and purple. So, all right, well, since you're not getting it, it's the greatest Megatron ever, and you are totally missing out. You, I you need... doubt that it's better than this one, but we'll explore uh, that reality. Uh, uh, what, a, what a throwback. Uh, Tonight. I, I don't know. It's hard, to, it's hard to say. I don't know. It's hard, hard to compare just in general. Look but, at this uh, take mode. Come it's, on. It's really it exciting that we're getting... It's exciting that we're getting a Super Megatron, though, right? I mean... Yeah. Pretty exciting. So, Christian, what is, uh, you know, what is the history what on Super Megatron? Megatron? Who is Super yeah. Megatron? I knew, a, I knew a little bit uh, when I started out the day. And then I talked to our good friend Peter and learned the rest there was to learn about Super Megatron. So, in 1991, in the Battle Stars manga, which went along with the Japanese G1 toy line that came out in 1991, with, you know, Star Convoy and Sky Gary and, you know, all those guys. There was a new evil entity that appeared called Dark Nova. And it attacked the Battle Stars and lost. But the Battle Stars were like, oh no! So Sky Gary took the Zodiac energy and stuffed it inside Optimus Prime's dead body, creating Star Convoy. Mm -hmm. That's how Star Convoy came along. Dark Nova saw that and was like, oh no! Now they're more powerful. So he pulled Galvatron out of the ice in the Arctic, or the Antarctic, I can't remember which one, and imbued him with Dark Nova energy and created Super Megatron, who then fought the Battle Stars and lost. So Dark Nova powered it up even more and created Ultra Megatron, who then fought the Battle Stars and lost. And then he was like, no, can't do that anymore. So he combined with Ultra Megatron to form Star Giant and fought the Battle Stars and lost. Ah. But in the meantime, he did get a really cool design that looks essentially like this. I'm I'm showing off Star Convoy with uh, Super Megatron. So in case anyone wants to know, yes, that is who he's designed to fight. Oh, look, they can be friends. And now we have the leader comparison that I wanted. Perfect. Yeah, there you go, Anna. That's what I was just thinking. I was like, if you want a leader, this is probably the this leader you the want. This is the leader to compare I mean, to. Back when leader meant something. So I I want to get through alt mode real fast because I want to fix mine <laughs> for the rest of the review. So this thing has two alt modes, right? Because it is a severe retooling of Titans Returns Galvatron, which is kind of appropriate, right? Because it was a resurrection of him. So that's kind of a cool thematic thing, I suppose. And by severe, I mean, you know, there's quite a few parts that are different. We'll point them out later when we talk about the robot mode. But it has three modes. It has a jet which is serviceable. I don't think any of us have jet mode right now. So Not at the moment. Maybe we'll see it by the end. Maybe we won't. It's fine. And then also, the most brilliant tank mode, which is illustrated here, which you achieve by putting a gun on top of Megatron laying down. <laughs> it's not like it's truly terrible, but it's not really that good either. I mean, it, in yeah. reality... You know, I am very close to robot mode right now because this is really where I am. Because it's really just Megatron doing a squat with his feet folded in a little more and some treads out. 
But yeah, it is a very like it kind of reminds me of the alt modes on um, the the Megatron Galvatron from the Robots in Disguise slash Car Robots. It kind of reminds me of all the modes on that, how they were all very vague. Yes. I was trying to figure out what that connection was, but I guess. Yes, it's just the vagary. It's not the colors or anything else. It's just that it's it's like it's a tank. If you squint and pretend that tanks have giant holes and crotches, then it's a tank. Um, but really, the tank mode's an extra mode, right? Because you only ever expect to have two modes. And the jet mode is about as good as most siege um, Decepticon jets or spaceships or whatever. I think it's better yeah. than that. <clears throat> I don't know. I thought the jet I mode was the same as those. decent. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I guess you can split okay. hairs. It's okay. The tank mode is I mean, it's okay better though. than the tank mode. Give yes. it that. It's better than Galvatron's plane off. mode. Right. The tank mode still shows off nice paint. And honestly, like, the turret mode is actually cool. The way the gun transforms into this turret thing. Like, that's actually neat by itself. It's got two points of turning. It goes up and down. It's, it's cool, but it's not enough to make up for a not really tank mode. Of course, I'm sure very few people will buy this for the tank mode. Are you making a jet? Uh, I am making a jet. She will I'm always make the mode you don't have. The tank mode still shows off the color, right? It still shows <clears> off <throat> decent paint. But honestly, I joked with someone, with one of our viewers earlier, that I would describe it as basically you take the robot mode and you shuffle all the parts randomly such that the treads are on the bottom and the turrets on top, and you call it a tank. Basically it, and it's it's whatever. Yeah, it's vaguely fine. It's not why you're buying the toy. That's a bonus thing you'll probably do once, and you'll probably never put it in that mode again. Unless you're one of the few people who like it, then please tell me why. I think it's I think it's fine. But yeah, it's not really that good. Did I do it? Is this it? Is it? That, I believe that's it, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that is it. Tank treads on the bottom and everything. Looks like the wings are off. Did I miss a step? No, I, I thought that was it. That was right. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, here it is. Oh, uh, wait, I'm no, pretty I sure that that's the way it I didn't is. Rotate the waist. Can you can you show it off on camera a little bit more? I gotta rotate first. Oh. It's gonna rotate the waist. I have to undo the legs to rotate the waist because the hip skirts are in the way. Excuse me. There went one of them. Oh man, way to go! I mean, the jet, I think the jet looks pretty neat. I don't know. I like it. Again, the jet is fine. It's <clears throat> it's a serviceable alt mode when you do this whole, you know, movie-style concession. If Megatron doesn't care if he looks too much like an Earth vehicle type of deal, it's all good. I mean, I think it's nice just because, like, again, the extra little paint that Takara puts on it, like that cockpit looks really nice, the yellow cockpit that... Christian one day will show off. I will show it off. I, I think I've got the arms wrong. That's okay. We'll just go from here. <laughs> I think yeah. the arms just fold up. The only way they fold up. There's a tab on the wings that looks like it's supposed to peg in. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That way. It feels like it could almost be like an X-Wing or something, and then it isn't. Yeah, I don't these know. little wing winglet pieces are really cool. Like Anna said, the mm -hmm. X-Wing bits right here. They're neat, and you can pull them back if you want. And they uh, rotate along this axis here to go into robot mode, which is nice. They're little cool parts. I don't know. I almost kind of feel like this whole thing... Um, you know, Anna, you had mentioned before that he reminds you of... 
uh, more than meets the eye Megatron or IDW Megatron. And, and I agree with you. I kind of feel like this is, you know, almost like what they would have come up with in the comic if they had shown him in jet mode in the comic. Did he never transform? Not in the comic. Oh, wow. That's funny. I, I think that yeah, there were some sketches from. or whatever at some point that, like, Milne shown off, like, him in his tank mode, like, at the end. But it, it wasn't, like, in a panel in the comic. Okay. Yeah, more than meets the eye was light on transformations, which mm-hmm. annoyed me at first, and then I kind of got over it. But I agree, this, this does share design aesthetics, especially in the chest and head. With that version of Megatron. Yep. Yeah, so... As we said, the jet mode's fine. It shows up the color, like Lucas said. You get, like, the cockpit and everything. You get the red parts as well. It, it looks nice as far as that goes. It's not the best jet you will ever own as a Transformers fan by far. But it is a jet. <laughs> I just feel like this is, you know, again, it's like you get the Takara treatment where... There's a little bit extra paint, like, you know, it has some extra cool molded parts and all that. And so, like, if that's what you like, like, if you like those extra little touches that Takara puts on it, I think that this this is cool. Like, if you don't care about that, then, you know, you're going to be like, why is this? Like, I don't know. How much was this anyway? Was it 60? 70 bucks. So, the price on on polls is 60. It's sold out, though, so you have to find it elsewhere. Okay. As always, following our trend of reviewing things that are sold out these days. Well, yeah, but, like, everything sells out now, so it's hard to... I mean, like, if you want Hasbro Mainline, I mean, you can't find it. You can still get a hold of them. You'll just pay a little more than that base price, which, if you're really into premium versions of retail figures, he might be worth it to you. So it's very much what he is. Earlier today, I actually posted him up on the shelf, <clears throat> just on my shelf of random things beside MMC's Impactor, besides Spartan. And he looked right. Like, they actually looked good together. Like, not like they should hang out together or anything, but just, like, the two figures didn't look like they came from different planets. Of course, I concealed the gaps in Megatron's arms, but they looked like, you know, the same, like, level of quality. And the look was right for them to be together. Mostly served by the coloring and the really good head sculpt on Megatron. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that the figure overall feels pretty solid. Um, You know, and I don't know if it's just the extra plastic that they have in there from, you know, the chest or whatever it is. But, I mean, it definitely, you know, it it definitely feels pretty chunky. Mm Mm-hmm. I think the only non-solid part, at least on my copy, is something it inherits from its uh, parent mold is the uh, leg connection in jet mode. The mm. two tabs that hold it there, is, they're not very solid. I mean, it's just like, boop, done. They're just teeny tiny. And they, they you know, they hold if you don't mess around with it. But if you move it at all, it, it kind of come unfastened. No big deal. It's just part of what that mold was. It's poorly designed from the get-go. But it's serviceable. It's not like it just flops around all the time. Yeah, and as a roll body comes out really solid, except for the, the gaps in the rest are the only spot that isn't really a nice solid piece. So I really like that aspect of them because it's just like, it's funny because I, I have a version <laughs> of that Galvatron. Like my version is kind of messed up because he's missing his head assembly. But I was still able to compare the two bodies to kind of see, you know, what they changed on this thing. And it's like they both changed a lot, but they also only changed a little. Like the legs were more or less left alone, aside yeah. from the the back assemblies now having treads built into the inside yeah. of the legs here instead of being hollow. That's really it on the legs. Instead of having treads on the arms, they gave him new mid arms, which are much thicker and nicer looking. Let's say here's the Galvatron. I. Honestly, this Galvatron figure, the thing that annoys me about this figure is I actually think it's pretty solid overall, except for the head. The head sucks, 
and like it ruins the whole figure for me. And so that's what I actually like about the Super Megatron is, is it has a really nice looking head. And so, you know, otherwise I think the mold's pretty solid. I think this mold also shows that that one could have been totally fine. You just make the you know, chest rotating head flip in to the chest ca cavity thing rather than having the headmaster gimmick. And I know they had to do it because that's what Titans did, but man, what a missed opportunity. That could have been the Galvatron, and now we've been waiting for another one instead. Yeah, it's the Super Megatron instead. Yep. Well, don't worry, Christian. We'll get the Galvatron kind of, here soon enough. Oh, I'm excited. Just, you know, it's, it's, this mold shows how close that one actually is to being right. really good. Because, really, right. like you said, the only problem with that one is the Headmaster thing, and it's just saddled with it. And it didn't have to be. Which I think yeah. it's crazy to think just how close that one was to good just because of how much I dislike it aesthetically. Like when I mess with that figure and when I look at that figure, I just think, oh, I really don't like this thing. But really, they only changed a few things on it. And this is all better. To me, it was the head. The arm kipple bothered me because you couldn't move his arms that much with the big treads on it, which they took care of. The head, which they took care of. And the chest and the shoulder assembly on the Galvatron I don't think look good, which they took care of. So since they changed all of that, I actually like it now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the head looks really nice. Like, I like, you know, of course, there's two different heads. Um, yeah, it's a good sculpt. It does have a second but... face. It has the whole pop open and rotate the face. And it is not executed well. No, it's actually really hard to do without it's scraping the paint really on the face. Difficult. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why they would design it that way. I Yeah. It's bizarre. I can't remember how to do it now. Oh, Very here we go. carefully. Yeah, yeah you, flip, you flip it up, and then... I mean, I think it works okay. You just have to be really careful with it. Like, you don't yeah. want to scrape that paint on the Megatron face. Cause I'm guessing the, the regular like normal looking Megatron face is super. And then <laughs> the black one is ultra. Is that right? That's Christian? Correct. Yep. Okay. That's it. He has also the kind the, of monster face. You know, it switches chests as well. So this is uh -huh. the, normal me the super Megatron chest. And then you flip it around and the more gnarly one is the ultra chest. So here's ultra. And, and since a lot of us aren't going to really like have a whole lot of care for the source material, you know, you can mix and match if you want to. Yep. That's what I'll be doing 100% because I like the ultra chest, but I like the super head. Those of you that have uh, Galvatron still, did they add ankle tilt or did Galvatron have ankle tilt? Galvatron uh, had Ga it. He had it. Okay, cool. I don't remember anymore. Do you not own that figure anymore? Mm -mm. Good choice. Look at that. See, I just bought like a $30 upgrade kit for him, so... It's so funny, because it's like, I am so against that figure, but I like this one just fine. I was really worried about my decision to get it when I got it, because I thought, you know, here I am. I know I don't like the Galvatron mold. I'm ordering a, like, fancy version of it, all upgraded. What if I don't like it, but I kind of trusted my, you know, gut of, in pictures, I really love this thing. I think it looks really good. And, you know, trusting my gut was right here. It has just enough upgrades that I like it now. Yeah, it really <clears throat> does fit that whole Selects premium feel. You know, a lot of times with the the kind of normal selects figures. It's just like retail figures that didn't have a home. This feels really cool. Well, and now that leader class is like shrunken down to Voyager, this feels kind of like a leader. So there we go. That is the thing. Like it is not much smaller than what we call modern leaders. Right. Cause you know, see here, they're actually shoulder to shoulder. Right. M and two deal are shoulder to shoulder. Um, double dealer's a little thicker. You know, there's more stuff and more plastic and whatnot. But 
they're the same size. So you won't have as much regret as you would otherwise for paying a little bit more for this guy. Yeah, I think he's worth the price. I mean, it's the only Super and Ultra Megatron that we've ever gotten. And like we ever will get. It's such an obscure thing. I mean, those comics, the, the manga comics, weren't even released in the United States until last week. I mean, that's that's kind of where we are on this. Yeah, pretty much. There, there's been fan translations available you know, for quite a while. But uh, they've only been officially released since last week. We have to say hello to Paul ago. and thank you for the colorful language. What? Pollen? Huh? What, what is guitar? What is he talking about? Giltar? Oh, Giltar. Oh, Giltar. Okay, I, sorry, I misread that. I can't read the comments, so what? Is this, is this person saying they want Giltar? Paul said oh, Giltar Paul must that, be next! Yeah. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation so. mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Giltar's really cool. What is Giltar, Christian? Giltar is... Uh, I forget who made it. I think the Quintessons made it. It's a weird hybrid between Optimus and Megatron. Ooh. Being interesting. It's very, uh, very powerful. That sounds groovy. I think Peter would just, I mean, how excited would he be if that came out? You know, one thing I really like about this figure is kind of illustrated by what Lucas and I have both done right now. And we're both kind of making amalgamations of the two modes. And I really like that you can do that because you can just kind of, whichever chest you like best, whichever head you like best, do you like the wings extended? What do you want to do with the gun? Like you can just do whatever you want with it. These shoulder wings, the little X wing wings, they actually move around either way. You rotate the chest. Sure, it'll be inaccurate if you put it in a mixed mode, but... Who cares? Because it's fun. Yeah, it's a it's lot a of thing you can do. Options. Yeah. Yes. It's your toy. Do what you want with it. <laughs> it's fun to play with. I'm definitely going to put the ultra chest back on because I just think that that one just has some unique details to it that I think look cool. It is unevenly so painted, right? I'm not missing a paint application. Yeah. Yes, it Which is. Which one? Okay, cool. The ultra chest. Just, there's there's a lot of a paint, paint. like all of the red is paint side and not on the other that's what i'm saying i am 90 percent sure that this is a paint error on the lower arm of mine he isn't just supposed to have a red dot on his lower arm is he uh, i don't wrist. see a red dot i don't see a red okay. dot i don't even see a red dot on yours actually it's not picking it yeah. up oh it's oh there I see it is it. yeah Oh, that's a so what were you saying about the chest, Christian? Oh, only one side of the Ultra Chest has a paint application on it. I was just making sure it wasn't mine. Oh, it was the, the, yours. like these things. Yes, yeah. 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 All good. But yeah, I mean, the red paint actually looks pretty good, though, on it. The red paint looks good. The um, dark gray plastic actually looks really cool. I like the, the texturing on it. It looks nice. And I, I really think the paint think apps that... are where they need to be. I do think all Megatrons in the future should be this color. Like, use this gray plastic and this red paint and this black paint. Yeah. It's, it's the perfect it's... Megatron colors to me. Yeah, I agree with you there. Right before I made my um, Galvatron killing picture, I was comparing the amount of color on both of them. In some places, like the legs... The Galvatron literally has more color overall on the legs, but it looks worse. Like, this isn't really a <laughs> illustration of lots of paint makes it better. It's like good paint and the right paint makes it better. Like, it's not just dripping with paint or anything or just dripping with color. It just has it where it needs it. Paul was wondering how we felt about the build quality of the figure. Like... I mean, it still is a it's a Titan's Return mold, so I mean, it's 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 gonna have that going on. But I mean, I, I feel like it, it feels a little more solid than uh, than the Galvatron figure that you know shares the mold. To me, at to least. me, it feels way more solid 
than that Galvatron, and I can't really figure out why. Because it doesn't feel like it should feel more solid. It just does. Yeah, mine feels totally like a modern figure. Like, no no build quality issues whatsoever. Yeah. It feels fine. Like, I guess maybe it's a little bit lighter. Maybe? I don't think so. I mean, I think that it yeah, feels... I think it's fine. Again, like, it feels pretty solid just, you know, again, compared to some of the stuff coming out now. Um, but... I mean, I guess the the legs are not ratcheted or anything, so I don't know if these will degrade over time, but, I mean, they seem fine. Like, it doesn't feel, um, you know, like there's an issue with them or anything. I tried really hard to transform the wings backwards earlier, and I was not able to break them before I figured out what I was doing, so that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Go. The toy prevented you from breaking it. That's great. Uh, yes. Paul, Paul thinks it wow. felt lighter. Um, I mean, so this Galvatron here, uh, I, I mean, I would say that the, the huge cockpit on his back, like, kind of, like, ups the weight. But um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it feels about the same. So to me, it feels a little hollower overall than, like, this modern stuff. Than the new stuff, like I was just saying that you know the um, the double dealer is definitely a more solid, chunkier figure. But like even with like the deluxes, this just feels like a more less hollow in the legs and whatnot. <clears throat> so that might be what you're feeling. It's just kind of a change in the thickness of the parts going forward. Yeah, you know. <laughs> One cool thing is they did choose to rebuild like one of the few molds from that era that had ankle tilt, so he's consistent with his fingers. <laughs> but he still doesn't have wrist rotation. So that's a bummer. And you had a robot cough there. A robot was, cough? Yeah, uh -huh. it was odd. Excellent. I have never robot coughed before. It, I feel like you're that's right. an evolution. It, it is it is good that they retool one that had ankle tilts because it still has ankle tilts. Yeah, he would benefit from wrist, especially because he has the wrist type that does the, the in-out thing, which feels like they should be able to have that. But, uh, no. I mean, theoretically, I like, there's molding on the inside, so, like, the little, the little gap or whatever that... But... Yeah. As, as my me, as my figure fell over because the you know it's I, I guess the I don't know like the one of my legs is a little bit loose. That took a bit of energy so, to get. So yeah, one of them is a little yeah. But. I mean, it'll go eventually, but yeah, mine were a bit hard to do, get to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, back. If anybody was wondering, Paul mentioned that he's happy it doesn't have the cockpit. And it does yeah. have a pretty clean back now because of that, which I really or like. You could, you could have it with wings deployed like I've got mine. Yeah, wings. Yeah. <laughs> J James in the uh, comment said that he has no attachment to the source of material, so this is going to be his Lost Light Megatron. And, Good. you know, I totally agree with you i think that this actually That's makes a really too, good i think that this does make a really good one um, i think i figured out why it makes such a good one i think it's that red paint it is yeah it's the red but i think even just the regular mold i mean i think it, it vaguely captures that aesthetic you know i think the face is really good again so i you know i don't know like i I was gonna say we have gotten. I was gonna say we've gotten a fair amount of, you know, chug Megatrons lately. So, like, I don't know. You know, would you rather have a face like this? I think this face is better. I mean, that one's not horrible, but I think this one's better. Yeah. And yeah, as far like as Lost Light Megatron goes, I, I like my model kit, <laughs> the uh, the Flame Toys kit that I got uh. for that explicit purpose, but. If you're not a model kit person, I think this will definitely pass. Oh, yeah. And I was saying earlier, you may not have been here yet, James, but I actually displayed this with my MMC reformatted Spartan earlier, which is 
you know, he should be not too far in size from that Megatron and they looked good together. Like they looked correct as a pair. So I think if you have some of the MMC reformatted guys for your lost light people that he'll look right with them. I mean, I think again, MMC, like their scale or not MMC, I'm sorry. Uh, more than meets the eye the, the scale was a little bit off in that comic just right. depending on which issue you were picking because there were some of the ones where Megatron was absolutely huge and Ultra Magnus was absolutely huge and then there's other ones where they were like shoulder to shoulder with other guys so it just kind of depends on which issue you pick but yeah no, I, I definitely think that if you're making a more than meets the eye shelf I think that this could be you know a good figure to put in there Definitely. He'll look good. Just gotta hide those arm gaps. Which I'm doing right now. It's actually really easy to do on him. Which makes me happy. Yeah. So yeah, very few complaints with this thing. Like I said, I really like the fact you can switch it between the modes. And much like James said, you know, I have no attachment to this as specifically Super Megatron. It just gets to be a cool Megatron for me. And it can be, you know, the Lost Light style one. <laughs> That's a good place for him on my shelf. It's definitely an obscure thing for them to have gone back and gotten. It really is. I'm glad they did. And uh, like you said, it can be just a cool Megatron if you don't care about the manga. It's that good. It doesn't It doesn't have to have source material to merit existing. Oh, James had a good thought, too, that you can put an Autobot symbol on one of the chests, so that way you can just flip it back and forth. I like the way so you think, that, James. That's actually a good yeah. idea. Double Agent Megatron. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, so, yeah. Like yeah, who's who's a double agent? I don't know. He's understand. not a double agent. No, if, if his chest rotates, he becomes a double agent. Okay. Like Punch Counter Punch and sure. Double Dealer. It was a comment. Good grief, guys. <laughs> I feel like it's like as he's made this journey shorts. over issue, you know, a number of issues and switches. But you know what? You'll get there in book club. Don't worry. You will get there in book club. I will get there in book club. I already know about it, but I'll also get there in book club. Book club. So would you say is this books? the best generation select so far? <sighs> no. This is Selects, isn't it? This is so pretty. It has yeah, I was gonna say, Yeah, that one might take the cake. I, I think Peronicon is my favorite <laughs> generation Selects. I think yeah. that it is consistent. It's a lot more expensive though, too. Yeah. Like, I think it's as. I think Peronicon is a bunch of actualized molds. It is a bunch of, you know, taking the Terracons and then making them as good as they can without making an entirely new mold and making them into the Seacons and kind of like, you know, I'm calling it actualization of the mold. I think that's what those were, and I think that's what he is, too. I'd throw Star Convoy in there, too. Eh, I don't know. The Star Convoy is... You know, I... Okay, I guess I'll say that if you're like Anna and you're a mold collector and you want to have the absolute best version of the mold, the Star Convoy is better than any of the versions of that mold. So I would definitely go with you. Like, if I had to get rid of all the other ones and just keep this one, this, you know, I'd be okay with that. I'm not sure if it's worth the extra money, you know? Um, I don't know. Like, if you had to pay the extra money for Star Convoy, or you had to pay the extra money for this Megatron, which one would you do? Megatron. Megatron. Yeah, I think the Megatron's better. I didn't get the Star Convoy, so it's obvious for me. <laughs> the Star Convoy just isn't different enough for me. Like, it's not something that appeals to me, really. It has a star in its chest. It does have a star Yay! Chest. It has chrome. And I have a version of that mold. When I when I ordered this guy, I did not have that Galvatron yet. I still haven't fixed it either. It's still a broken Galvatron. Poor Galvatron. I'll probably never fix it because I don't like it. 
But, they could just leave it as a corpse laying beside him for yeah. Like, just get rid. Throw, throw the Galvatron in the trash, and then you'll be fine. Yeah, that's. So. I mean, that is like the point I've made fifty times about this figure that really blows me away is that I literally strongly dislike the mold this is built on, but I actually really like this. It just gets yep. me. Yep, I think my recommendation is if you have the opportunity to get this at approximately retail cost, definitely go out and do it. You won't regret it. I think the other thing about this particular figure is, is that it's probably like, you know, once it's gone, it's probably going to be gone. I mean, it's kind of like the Piranicons again, where it's like, if you're on the fence about it, I, I would just go ahead and get it, you know, cause a lot of these, it's just two years from now, you're going to have a hard time finding it. I feel like. I think two years from now, it'll be impossible to find yep. if it's not impossible today. So, I mean, I think that the Takara stuff is a little easier than what it used to be. Like, I don't know, some of that older Takara stuff, it's just so hard to get get your hands on it, like, after a while. Yeah. But. Agreed, some of it really is. So, but, but yeah, so this is, like, I definitely would recommend it to you. I think it was, it was decent. It wasn't that bad of a, of a markup. Um, again, like, I mean, we got it for, through Hasbro, so... Um, you know, I probably wouldn't pay more than like 70 bucks for it personally, but I think it's worth that. I do too. So. Yeah, it's definitely a premium figure. It's fine. No regrets. Yeah, go get him. Uh, I was going to mention, um, that last night we talked about Studio Series 86 on TFLP. If anybody wants to go and check that out, the podcast feed is up, and then it's also up on YouTube. Um, and oh, I'm surprised Randall says he hasn't gotten his from Pulse yet. I thought they shipped all these out. I guess Megatron's? Not. No, Pulse hasn't gotten their stock yet. It's not due till December. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I forgot that we got ours from. Yeah. We didn't get ours from Pulse. Never mind. We did not. So, got ours from Collecticon, so. We yeah. did get ours from Collecticon. So, yeah, I forget that they get theirs like two months early or whatever, so. So, yeah, but I will say for Pulse, like, a lot of times when they get these figures in, that they end up getting a little bit extra stock, so I would like just watch it. And if you're interested in the figure, you'll probably be able to order it then. Like that happened to me with Star Convoy. I didn't get in originally, and it sold out. But then once they actually got them in, they got in some extra figures. So yeah, I got about half the but... that way. Yeah. So you can definitely get things that way, and it's this is worth getting. Totally worth getting. It's totally good. Definitely do it. Camp out the site and wait. So, there you go. Okay, I'm not that intense. You just gotta be just quick and be watching. That's all. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks to everyone in the chat uh, tonight that participated. Uh, Catherine, Randall, James, Paul. Uh, appreciate uh, you guys throwing your comments and questions up there. And um, yeah, so I guess we'll uh, see you guys next week. Yeah, if anyone wants to join us for book club, we're doing it Sundays, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. If you want to join us, we're going to be doing the uh, issues four through six of More Than Meets the Eye for next week. So if you want to catch up to us and read More Than Meets the Eye with us to have a bit of a throwback to some older IDW comics, feel free to join us. It'll be fun. A few of us get together in the Discord chat and chat every Sunday night at 8 30 p.m central so it'd be good to see you there or hear you hear you there all right well thanks guys and we'll talk to you next week good night